Hello and welcome to another one of my videos. And in today's video, I'm going to go through why I have 30 pieces of gold. I'm going to title this 30 pieces of gold, Judas, your move. <laughs> it's because I find it a bit funny. If anyone who is ultra religious takes offense to that, it's a joke, okay? You know, that you need to be able to joke about things. So, yeah, I end up buying 30. Uh, 20 franc gold coins. Some of these are sold. I've sold five of them So I've got them priced at 290 plus post. They're all restrikes. They're all 1914. I'm just gonna Break them down Now usually I don't really buy or I don't like to buy a lot of the same coin. I'm a variety channel The reason I'm a variety channel is because it gives me multiple outs. However, I bought these because it's coming up to the end of the tax year and I'm thinking, well, oh, actually I've got, you know, a very sizable amount of money in my account and I'd rather have it in stock than pay the tax man because I don't see the tax man fixing homelessness or the roads that I walk on. So why would I want to give it to him? If HMRC is watching, I do not have a problem with taxes per se. I do pay my fair share. I just don't see why I should pay more when legally I don't have to. So yeah, nothing really special about these coins. They are nice. Got them up for 290 plus post. Now, I'm at a bit of an advantage over other people when I buy stuff like this because for those of you that have been following my channel for a long time, they know that I started off as a sole trader. I've still got a lot of sole trader stock on the books and the reason I didn't sell it is because I didn't want to get crippled by tax. So what I did was... I sold it and the plan was to, oh, I sold small amounts of it and the plan was to transition into a stamp business. Unfortunately for me, the Royal Mail was turned around and said, well, actually we're gonna decommission all the old stamps. So now, you know, I've got a lot of stock that instead of transitioning into the stamp business, I can't really do that. I'm just gonna have to use the stamps that I have. I don't really have a problem with that. I, I do well out of that. It was a nice, I had a nice run and you know, that comes to an end. But what I can do is I can swap these for the sole trader stock. And I'm just going to turn and say, well, actually, I'm not avoiding taxes because I'm not. I'm just moving profitable coins from my sole trader position into the business for a fair rate. And I'm selling bullion coins into the sole trader business at a fair rate because I've got a few years worth of stock that I can run through just to keep on living. So what will happen is I will trade out the, the more obscure bits and it will leave me with say sovereigns or these bullion coins, easy to move bullion coins. And then over the course of say April every year, I'm just gonna ping off 20K worth. You know, I'll do that for a few years. And then that'll be me completely out of my sole trader position. I'm not avoiding taxes on, on any step of the equation. Now, it's easier when I do it gold for gold because there's no VAT on either side. I'm just gonna turn around to HMRC if they do look at my accounts and I'm just gonna explain, look, I had an overhang. I didn't wanna cash it all out at once and there's nothing in, in kind of uh, the guidance to say I have to. They They could argue with me that I'm running very similar businesses and I've tried to avoid VAT, but that isn't true because I pay VAT on the business side. So that's rubbish. There, there is a clear and definite split and had it been the case that I could carry on with a stamp business, it wouldn't be the problem. So there's no issue in my mind anyway. I did get some other coin in. I'm not sure I wanna show it. I might. I might save it for another video. But yeah, 30 pieces of gold. If anyone wants wants one, they're 290 plus post. I'm not going below that because I can sell them to myself for 290 plus post. Let's lay them out. I think that'd be a nice. So what what's gonna happen over the course of the next year or so Everyone know, who watches my channel knows that 
I want to get out. I want to go to Germany. I want to live abroad again. I'm going to end up with a lot of coins like this. They're going to be in the lock box. I'm going to come back once a year. I'm just going to cash them in. Does it matter if I lose a couple of percentage points? No, not really, because in the grand scheme of things, I've got maybe three to four years of runtime in terms of my sole trader stock of what's what's in my, my lot box. In three to four years, do I expect these to be worth more than 290? You'd hope so. You know, I'm not taking them out. I've, I'm gonna have a blended average of when I come to sell. I've just got a lot of nitty gritty bits that need moving from the sole trader side. And that's very easy to solve. When it comes into the business, I trade it into the sole trader side. The stamps are just sell to the business at, at 99%. It's gonna be quite a good year for me on paper. It doesn't necessarily mean my assets go up, but on paper it means I'm making a fair amount of profit. But the reality is I'm just moving assets from one side to the other and they just get valued and revalued. Now, if I was to sell these at 290, it's actually probably a very fair rate I make ten pound a coin on that, so I'm making three hundred pounds. Now, some of you are going to say, "Oh, that's a really good day if you do that." Yes and no, but the outlay for me, if I'm making ten pound, I spent eight thousand four hundred pounds to get three hundred pound back. How many businesses are you gonna are you gonna do that? What's that? Three percent, maybe. Let's work that out. So eight eight four divided by so equals. 3.5%. So I've done it on this occasion because I've had an out, but would I usually stake 8,400, 3.5%? Depends on the coin. It really does depend on the coin. And just to give you an insight, the larger up you get in this game, the lower your spread gets. So if you are dealing with 100,000, pounds worth or you're dealing with say a hundred ounces if you make one percent it's a good day at the office you make one percent of 150k one percent of thousand because all you're doing is you're setting a deal up you're you're acting as a middleman and you're brokering it so that one thousand pound or one percent one percent is awful it's an awful awful margin but if that takes you an hour it's a very lucrative business model it takes a long time to get there and you've got to have connections to kind of get that level of stock in. If I turn around to my supply network and said, can I have a hundred thousand pound worth of stock? Uh, can I have a hundred ounces worth of stock? They're gonna turn around and say to me, yeah, but it's gonna cost you spot plus 3%. So I've got to sell it for spot plus 4%. So the way that that mo model works is someone would have to come to me and say, I want a hundred ounces. And I say, well, you pay me, I'll pay my guy, stock will come in, I'll give you the stock. You know, it's a very, very funny game that we play and the margins just get smaller and smaller. For me, I'm happy with my lot. If it sells, you know, I'm happy to sell it. If it doesn't sell, I'll sell it. I'll trade it myself because I can trade it trade it out for stuff like... I'll show you. I've got a couple of bits on the side. I'll trade it out for bits like this. This owes me £700. It's probably a £1,500 coin. I'll trade it out for 1200 There's 300 profit in the business. Stuff like this. These, this is now in profit. This is probably a fourteen, uh, probably a fifteen hundred pound coin. I'll trade these out for two ninety, up to fifteen hundred. I make money on both sides of the equation. So not a problem. I hope you've enjoyed the video. I hope you've kind of gained something from that. Sometimes you have to be a bit savvy. Sometimes you have to do things in a counterintuitive way. But overall, you need to look at the grand scheme of things. You know, I've got lots and lots of coins that are just a hodgepodge. And if I'm studying abroad or if I'm no longer trading, I want them gone in one go. I'm not going to be able to do that strategically with all the odds and sods that I have. You know, I've got a fair amount of odds and sods. So I need to think about the ease of selling moving forward. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed the video and I will see you on the next one.